the first thing we have to think about when we think about making money with ads is we've got to know that we have an offer that's going to work. So I would say, take your offer, take your sales page and send out a few emails to your list. If your email list buys, you know you're on to a winner. That's the offer you want to turn into your holiday okay. offer. I'm Amy Porterfield, ex-corporate girl turned CEO of a multi seven-figure business. But it wasn't all that long ago that I lacked the confidence, the budget, and the time to focus on growing my small but mighty business. Fast forward past many failed attempts and lessons learned, and you'll see the business I have today. One that changes lives and gives me more freedom than I ever thought possible. One that used to only exist as a daydream. I created the Online Marketing Made Easy podcast to give you simple, actionable, step-by-step -step strategies to help you do the same. If you're an ambitious entrepreneur or one in the making who's looking to create a business that makes an impact and a life you love, you're in the right place, friend. Let's get started. Welcome back to another episode of Online Marketing Made Easy. I'm excited for today's episode because if you're an entrepreneur, you know that running a business means juggling a lot of responsibilities. And let's be honest, navigating the world of Facebook and Instagram ads can feel like just another really big task that can be overwhelming. But here's the thing, social media advertising is not just another task. It's a powerful tool that can transform your business if done right. And that's where my guest comes into play. Her name is Salome Shalak, and she's a mastermind when it comes to Facebook and Instagram ads. She's the brain behind the strategies that have helped over 5,000 students take their online courses to the next level. She specializes in helping online course creators run ads to sell more courses. So. She's perfect for my audience, right? But that's not all she does. Today, we're talking about a different kind of ad that you can run during the holidays, but I'll get to that in just a second. So Salome's experience has guided countless personal brands, social media celebs, and influencers to amplify their reach and grow their impact. Her company is called The Launch Lounge, and it's an agency specializing in Facebook and Instagram ads for, like I said, course creators, which has scaled to seven figures in just a few short years. She empowers online course creators, experts, and coaches to scale their businesses to multiple six and seven figure successes. So today though, we're not talking about selling your course using Facebook ads, although I think you can use a lot of the strategies that she shared for just that, to run Facebook and Instagram ads to sell more courses. But today we're getting a little bit more specialized. I wanted Salome to come on and talk about how to run ads during the holidays. And we're not talking about how to run ads like a Black Friday ad to sell more courses, although you could do that. I've done that for many years. But what about the other things you have in your business? Like, do you have templates or a mini course or are you an affiliate for software or different products that you can run ads to? Because as you'll hear her say in the interview, around Black Friday and around holidays, people want to buy. They're looking at ads more. They're more willing to buy. And if you had a lower priced program, let's say $97, and you can run during the holidays, you're more likely to sell a lot, especially if you use some of the strategies that Salome is gonna talk about in this episode. So again, you can use these strategies to sell your courses during the holidays, but also what else do you have in your business that you've kind of neglected or you haven't sold in a while, or you can make a quick cash injection if you promoted this one thing that you have in your business. Let's get more creative and start thinking about what else might you want to promote during the holidays and let's start making you some money, but we've got to plan ahead. We've got to start now, which she'll talk about in the episode as well. Salome and I go way, way back. I once met her at a live event I did in San Diego, and we have been friends ever since, and I very much trust her with all of your Facebook and Instagram ad needs. So let's go ahead and dive in. Salome, thanks so much for joining us yet again on Online Marketing Made Easy. We're happy to have you. Oh, I mean, it's always so lovely for me to be here and to talk to your audience. You know, I love them and you know how much I love you. 
you love my audience so well. We go way, way back. I mentioned this in the intro and I'm just so excited to have you back on because you are to me, the expert of all experts in this area. And we're going to talk about a very specific topic today, which is how can you do holiday campaigns using paid advertising but i made this clear in the intro we're going to make it clear one more time we're talking about let's say you want to do a black friday sale of templates or a mini course or maybe you're an affiliate for software and you want to promote that software or i have a friend who one of the things she does is she promotes clean skincare because she's an influencer it's not her skincare but she promotes it during black friday so it's things like that right Yes, that's what we're going to talk about. And what excites me about this is it's an opportunity for anyone everywhere. It's kind of a levels the playing field for those who don't have big email lists. They can run like a Black Friday sale or a, some kind of a holiday sale. And those who have big email lists or those who have more experience, like this is the the equalizer. We're all on an even, like on an even foot here. And we're all have the opportunity to take advantage of this period where people are paying attention and they're hungry to buy and they're hungry to spend their money. So let's go get some quick wins there. Yes, quick wins. I love that. The holiday season is coming up so quickly, so this is very timely. Okay, so one of my first questions is, what are the most common mistakes businesses make with Facebook and Instagram ads during the holiday season, and how can they avoid them? I love that question because the first and only mistake that stops anyone from making money with ads is not focusing on marketing enough. Like that is the biggest mistake a lot of people when they're struggling to make money online think that all they need is more eyes and sometimes we do need more eyes right there is a time when we do need more eyes but they think that ads is going to save marketing and it doesn't there's no ad on this planet that can save marketing that isn't great (laughs) unfortunately that's true So the first thing is we got to build our audiences. That's number one. Number one mistake is people forget that they need to bring new people into their worlds every single day. And, you know, we can run simple list building ads to do that. The second thing is they forget how important it is to hear what their ideal customer really wants and then create fabulous offers for that audience. If you have an audience that's growing every single day and you have offers that your audience can't wait to say yes to, the ads piece is easy because all you have to do is put it in front of them and they are going to love it. So that's the first big mistake that I see. I want to ask about the audience. So if we're talking about paid advertising and you're saying, well, they need to grow an audience. Some people might be listening and they're like, I'm going to run ads to a cold audience because I don't have an email list yet, or I don't have a Mm. big social media following. Could that work with these holiday ad campaigns? Or why are you saying they need an audience? Well, I think, you know, we all with marketing, we always want to go out into cold environments where people don't know us with a a little less confronting offer or maybe something that isn't quite something that says buy my stuff straight away. Okay. So, so we've got to have a bit of a long-term strategy and a short-term strategy where, where we're always getting in front of new people that's you know when we're doing when we're doing reels on social media that's helping to get us in front of new people same with when we're running engagement ads or even traffic ads to blog posts on our websites that's a strategy to get us in front of new people and once people know about us and they have seen us online and maybe they've had a couple of touch points, then it's best to put that offer in front of them. So when I say uh, I want people to always be building their audiences, you know, that can be your long term list building strategy. And then you're going to use email marketing to make those offers to them. But it could also be as simple as creating a blog post where you talk about something that you absolutely love or some, or you solve a problem for someone and, and you run ads to that post and then you retarget all the people who went to that page with an offer to get your 
whatever it is. Okay. So you're warming them up. So now when you're running your holiday ads, you're running them actually to a warmer audience and you've already given them value before you've sold them anything. Yes, exactly. Gotcha. Exactly. Okay. And it, it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a, a, a spiral, like it builds on each other, right? The warm audiences, you always want to be growing your audiences and getting in front of new people, but only getting in front of new people isn't going to bring money in the door. It's the offers that bring money in the door. So this is a really great opportunity to, to run those offers, those ads for, for the sale to all these people who have been to your website and all these people who who have engaged with you on Instagram and who have engaged with you on Facebook and who is on your email list, all those warm, juicy, I call them the juicy audiences because they're just sitting there and they're waiting for you to put something in front of them that they're going to love. So yeah, we want to definitely make sure we always saturate our warm audiences with our offers, but also focus on keep bringing in new people into our, into our digital sphere. Got it. Okay. So that was one of the mistakes I cut you off. Cause you were going to say another mistake you see a lot of people make when it comes to ads. Yeah. Another mistake people make when it comes to ads is they stop running ads in the holiday because okay. it does, it does get a little bit more expensive. Not always and not in every niche, but a mistake that I see people make is they say, well, I'm just going to stop my ads because it's going to be more expensive. And I want, I want everyone listening to have more of a annual point of view or perspective on their ads rather than a weekly or a daily. Did I make money today? Okay. Even, even having a monthly, like, okay, did I make money this month sort of view is going to give you a better, much more calm, much more strategic approach to running ads. And the thing is, when we stop and start our ads, we create a bit of chaos for the algorithm and we create a bit of chaos in our accounts. And the algorithm just really doesn't like stop start. It just okay. wants continuous flow of traffic so that it can continue to learn and find our people for us. So don't stop your ads. Even if you're running $5 a day video ads just to bring new people into your world, don't stop your ads. Okay. I've been guilty of that before. So that's mm, really good. So I'm have gonna... I. So okay. have I. I've learned the hard way. Uh, I'm going to make sure my team's very aware of that one. Mm. Okay. So this could be considered a general question. So if you're planning on running ads during the holiday or not, you're going to love this next question. But also this is going to relate to your ads that you're running during the holidays. So how can businesses identify which ads are underperforming before they end up losing a lot of money? This is a question I get asked yeah. a lot. I love that. Okay. So the first thing we have to think about when we think about making money with ads is we've got to know that we have an offer that's going to work. So I would say, take your offer, take your sales page and send out a few emails to your list. If your email list buys, you know, you're on to a winner. That's the offer you want to turn into your holiday okay. offer. So when we do this, we use our, you know, our marketing, our ability to put offers in front of our existing email audience to, to tell us what we can amplify with ads. So then we take, then we introduce ads to an offer that we already know is working. And that's, you know, out of the gate going to ensure that you are not wasting money. You're only paying for ads to put it in front of people that you know are already going to convert. So that's the first thing. The second thing is when we look at ads and we want to know if it's working or not, we have two different ways of looking at the numbers. The one way is what I call outcome numbers. And outcome numbers are typically return on ad spend. And that's as simple as today I put $5 in and I made $10. So okay. I made money. My return on ad spend was two because I put in $1 and I made two. So that's the bottom line, right? And if you can look at that and you see that you're making money, it's positive, sweet all day, you know? Yes. And then the second numbers that we look at is what I call process numbers. So there are some of the numbers that will tell you what's happening between the moment when someone sees your ad for the first time and yeah. when they buy. So those are numbers like 
We call it CPM, which is just your uh, cost per 1,000 impressions. And, and you know, you want to look at that and make sure that it stays fairly consistent. There's different benchmarks for different industries and different niches, but we want to make sure that it stays fairly consistent. So if you have a brand new offer and your return on ad spend is negative or it's not making money, you come back to your ad numbers and you look at those process numbers, you look at your CPM and you go, is my cost fairly similar to what it usually is? And if it's much higher, then you know you've either targeted the wrong audiences mm -hmm. or the messaging in your ad is not quite landing with those audiences. And so, you know, you, you, you kind of have what I call a message market match mismatch. Mm -hmm. So it's either the audience is wrong or the message in the ad, but somewhere they're not connecting. So that's the first process number we look at is CPM. Another one that I'll look at is click through rate. And that really is the rate at which people who see your ad click to go to your landing page. And you always want to make sure that's above 1%, okay. which sounds really low. Very. But if you're not making money in that return on ad spend number and you look at click through rate and you see, oh, hang on, people aren't even clicking on my ad. That's the problem you're again going to want to make sure, do I have the right audience? Do I have the right offer? You want to ask yourself, why are the people that's seeing my ad not clicking on it? Is it a copy issue? Is it a creative issue? Because you definitely want them to be clicking. And then the last process number you want to look at is your landing page conversion rate. And typically we want that to be, if it's a, a lead magnet, we want that above 45%. But if it's a sale, yeah. you want that to be around 10%. Anything okay. below 10%, you're starting to kind of risk losing a bit of money. So if you're sending people straight to a, a sales page, you want that to be around 10%. Uh, and again, it kind of depends on the price point of it. So just know that first number we look at, return on ad spend, did I make more money? If the answer is no, then go to those process numbers and see if you have the right audiences, if you have the right messaging. We love benchmarks. So I appreciate you sharing mm. the exact percentages to look for. Very, very valuable for my audience. We love that. Love okay. That. So then my next question is, are there specific audience targeting techniques that work best for holiday ad campaigns, especially for businesses with limited budgets? And we're going to assume that people are probably selling something that's like $200 or less. And I'm going to guess like $100 probably is the sweet spot. Or I guess I should ask you that if someone's doing an ad campaign during the holidays and they want a quick cash injection, let's pretend they're doing a Black Friday sale. Is there a sweet spot of a price point that they should be focused on? Yeah, I want to say, I think you're, you nailed it, saying below $100. I think okay. once there's a there's a psychological thing that happens when it goes over, you know, over $97. Okay. And, and, and we, you know, it kind of depends a little bit on how good you are at making an offer. But I want to say, keep it below $100. Uh, so that and keep it a no brainer and, you know, right. stack the value in that offer so much that people just look at it and go, wow, this is the best deal ever. Okay. So to answer your question about the audience targeting, yeah. please think about that. I think if you're on a low budget and you want to make some quick money, I think the best way to go is target your warm audiences. So you'll okay. target those people in your, in your digital world that have already interacted with you. And the reason I say those are the best audiences to target is because they already love you. They already adore you. They, you might even have sent out an email about the offer. So when they see the ad, it's maybe the second or the third time they're seeing the offer. And now they're really going, oh, I wanted that. Mm, I should get it. I think I should get it. Because because we know that psychologically people need to see offers a few times before they decide to buy. So I would say target your warm audience and then rank that ad up to a high frequency. And what I mean by that is look at the frequency that the ad, your ad dashboard tells you and make sure you get that ad in front of your warm audience. I want to say 
up to almost frequency of seven. Like, okay. What does that mean? Frequency? How many times they're going to see that ad? How many times the average person in your audience has seen that ad? Okay. And, and, you know, typically we want to avoid getting in front of someone seven times all the time, but we're not doing this all the time. We're just doing this during the holiday promotion. You know, this is a short, quick in and out. And then when you're doing, when you're running the ad to a high frequency, which means you might need to crank up the budget a little bit in the short period of time. But when we're running it to a high frequency like that, you maybe want to consider having a few different creatives that you can kind of circle through so that they see the ad, but they see a different ad over and over. Okay. That actually leads me to my next question. And I was going to ask you, how can businesses craft a unique ad that stands out in the crowded holiday market and attract their ideal customer? Like what are some secrets that you know to get seen during this really busy time? Yeah, I love that. Okay, so I think variety in your visual approach helps. Some people are gonna respond to the more edited, more designed, beautiful ad. Some people are gonna respond to the more native organic style ad that looks like you just grabbed your phone and you did something on the fly. And we know because social media is more native and it is more organic that these more organic ads, they perform better typically. Now, it depends on your audience. What I like to do is when I'm creating ads that I'm putting in front of people who have never, ever, ever met me, the question I ask is, what is the picture I want them to have in their heads when they're thinking about themselves enjoying whatever I'm selling? So for example- Yeah, so so you wanna you wanna ask yourself, because think about ads for a second. Most of us are probably sitting in front of the TV with our phones mindlessly scrolling when an ad comes up. Yeah. So we have as advertisers a microsecond, an absolute microsecond to first of all pull them away from the TV. Secondly, interrupt their thinking and make them pay attention. So we want to make sure that our creative starts with a great hook, something that addresses either a benefit that they really, really, really want in the way that they would say that they want it. So we use their language or addresses a pain point that they really, really want to avoid. And it's super important that we get to that first. We get that, put that in the headline, put that on the ad, whether it's the first line of your video or the text on your image. So we've got to get them out of that inertia, out of that, you know, blank staring and blank scrolling and make them pay attention. Okay. How you do that is up to you. You can be as creative as you want. And, and you know, if it's a green screen sort of thing, or it can be, uh, you know, something where you're drawing something, or it can just be as simple as an image ad with a great line on it that instantly will grab their attention and get them to read the rest of the copy and click to the landing page. And the strategy here is to try a few different things like you mentioned earlier. So having a few different ads in this rotation is a good thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, It's absolutely a good thing. And the algorithm is going to kind of pick its favorite anyway. And so you'll see there might be one or two or three of your ads that you've set up that perform better than the others, but don't switch the others off. Just keep them because I find that sometimes the algorithm likes having the losers just to kind of lean on them to keep the winners going. So, you know, create as different, as many different variations as you want. And, and I think I think your audience will find that they're going to be surprised to see the variations that the algorithm choose. Sometimes it go, leans towards video. Sometimes it leans towards images. And, and we just don't know. We just really don't know. It's kind of it's so like almost weather dependent. Yes, so true. OK, so I love that you're giving all this advice for these ad campaigns during the holidays. And I know some people are going to think, OK, but. What about timing? Like if Mm. I was going to do a Black Friday weekend campaign for some templates that I have and they're $97, when would you suggest that they start and when they end a campaign like that? Oh, great. I think they have to start early. 
get in early. Don't Even be afraid. Before Black Friday starts. Oh, yes. Oh, don't wait, be tell afraid. me more about that. What if, but if you're doing a Black Friday sale, how do you justify it starting early? And what do you mean by that? I don't think anybody's sitting there going, oh, hang on, it's not Black Friday anymore, or oh, <laughs> yeah, it's it's three days before Black Friday. And I, I mean, I speak as a, as a non-American, <laughs> so I know you guys are all on your holidays and you're celebrating. And right. but I have I've seen campaigns that have done so incredibly well in the week leading up to Black Friday because oh. people want to get their shopping done before the frenzy, right? Yep. So I don't think anybody should be afraid to start, I mean, you know, a week before, even a few weeks before. I think one of the strategies that I love is starting to talk about what's coming, starting to tease what you're going to promote. And I wouldn't run ads to those teases, but you will, if you send emails to your audience about what's coming and you, you know, you just start building building a bit of anticipation on your social media, there's already going to be a little bit of a buzz and then start early, get them in early. And finally, I would say use urgency and scarcity at the end. You know, when you, if you decide your Black Friday sale ends even a week after Black Friday. Yeah. Keep running those urgency and scarcity ads. Keep running those ads to people who have been to the checkout page but didn't complete the sale. Yeah. People who've been to the sales page but didn't complete the sale. And even your entire warm audience, keep telling them this is going away. This is your absolute last chance. It has to disappear. Get in quick and just make use of that urgency and scarcity at the end. But don't be afraid to start early. I'm so glad I asked that because I think most of us would be like, okay, we're starting on the Friday after Thanksgiving and we're ending on Sunday. But because I, I do know ads, it takes a while to ramp up and kind of play around yeah. with some of those numbers you mentioned. It does. Yeah. So the algorithm needs some time to really find your sales for you and to start optimizing and find that nice groove where it's delivering, which is why I say don't stop your ads, because once we have that momentum built, we want yeah. to keep that momentum. Yeah. So I think even if you think about, let's think about Black Friday as a month long campaign. And you don't have to be selling hard from day one in that month long campaign, but you can start a soft sale at the beginning and you can definitely end with a hard sale. You can definitely end and you might have a few different variations of creatives in there. And you might even start by running some ads to cold audiences. And then as those retargeting audiences build and build and build and build, you start running it more just to the warm audiences, but don't be afraid afraid to make it a full month long campaign. Oh, I love this. Okay. Mm. So what part does organic content play in supporting this ad campaign during the holidays? And can entrepreneurs use both to get the best results? Yeah, absolutely. The first thing I would say is unless you're using fancy software, the easiest way to differentiate between sales that you made from organic strategies and sales that you made from paid ads is yeah. simply to have two different landing pages. Okay. You just have or sales pages. So you'll have one page, two pages that look exactly the same. And one is called, you know, paid at the end of the URL or some kind of indication that you it's an ad. Uh, and the other one is organic. And so that way, when you're at the end of your promotion, you can just look at the tagging in your CRM and you can see, oh, I made this much money from my paid efforts and I made that much money from my non-paid efforts. Yes. And, and I think with organic, it's also important that we think about who we're talking to, right? So let's use the example. If you're talking, if you're posting on Reels and if your Reels is anything like mine, Reels are getting seen more now by new people. I kind of always think Reels is now, has turned into the networking of social media, right? Okay. It's going out there, it's getting placed in the For You page and it's meeting new people for us and bringing new people into our social media environment. But stories is being seen more by people who already follow us, people who already like us and know about us. So when you think about your organic strategy, 
what is the message you want to put in front of people who don't know who you are, who haven't met you, that you want to bring into your world? And what is the message that you want to put in front of the people who already know you? And so you might use that guide as a little bit of a differentiator in terms of making sales. You know, maybe you want to push the sales really hard on stories, go really hard on the urgency and scarcity on stories, but bring them into your world with the reels and make sure that they meet you where you're at, that you build that curiosity and then you can put the, the offers in front of them. And a lot of people, I say to a lot of people, use your ad creative in your social as well. Saves you from creating it twice, Amen. you know? Yeah, yes. you just I use the ad creative. More. Yeah, because we have yeah. a lot of ad creative. I don't think we're using it. I love that. That's such a great yeah. point. I want to make every sure everyone understands. If you're making these graphics and these captions for your ads, why not use that on social as well so that you're not yeah. having to create tons and tons of content for your holiday promo? So just something yeah. to think about. And then also one of my final questions, and then I want to kind of talk to you about ad costs tend to be really expensive during the holidays. So a lot of people mm. just won't even run ads or they'll make the mistake you mentioned earlier. We just stop ads during the holidays because they get really expensive sometimes. So what are some cost effective ways that businesses can still achieve their advertising goals when things could get really expensive? It does get expensive. And I think that's why it's important to run promotions. You know, it's how do we make more money when there's more advertisers? We advertise more and we make more money, yeah. make more <laughs> offers. I think, I think what matters is, I think it's important to sit down and ask yourself, what do I already have that I can sell to my audience? And I think everyone will be surprised at what they actually already have. And that can maybe just, you know, be polished and cleaned up a little bit. Yes. Don't be afraid to make a variety of different offers because you're going to have some people in your audience who wants the thing that's more suited to newbies. And you're going to have some people in your audience who wants the thing that's more suited to experienced people in your audience, you know? So don't be afraid to offer the quick thing for them to buy, but then use your email as well and make some other bigger offers as well. It is more expensive, but people are buying more. So, you know, yeah. if we're going to, if we're going to look at the glass half empty, we've got to look at the glass half full as well. This yeah. is our opportunity to put offers in front of our audience and make money because they are buying. That's essentially why the ads are more expensive. So That's doing nothing is, yeah, doing nothing is just going to ensure that you miss out. Yeah. I, I love that way of thinking. Okay. So you are the expert of all experts in this area. So what would be your final parting words for anyone listening? A lot of my audience, we're going to have some newbies that are going to try out a new offer, but we've got more advanced marketers listening as well. The goal is to find your quick win during the holidays. You would likely already have something that you can offer. So what are your parting words to anyone thinking, okay, maybe I'll try a Black Friday deal. Maybe I'll go for this. My parting words is, and I'm so, I'm so happy you asked me this. I'm so excited to tell you this. Ads are cheaper now than they have been in five years what? overall. Yes. Really? Yes, they are. And, you know, if you think the algorithm is making impressions all over the place, if you think about a few years ago, it's just got harder and harder and harder. And now because of things like the For You page, where the audiences have been trained to be kind of comfortable with seeing content from people that they're not yeah. following yet. Meta is making so many more impressions of our ads we, and that trickles down all the way to the bottom where we're seeing costs actually come down. So the opportunity here for both experienced and new, you know, people who want to run ads is this is the time to jump in. This is the time to dip your toes in the water, start playing around, have a go, see what happens, get your ducks in a row, set up your account and just, you know, target the people who are already in your world. Yes. And, and let's make it happen. Let's see. Let's get started. Let's get something out there because this is really a huge opportunity for anyone to dive in and start using ads. 
Truly, truly. So Salome, where can people find out more about you? Where can they go? They can go to thelaunchlounge.com. That is where I have a podcast called The Launch Lounge. There's a blog on thelaunchlounge.com. And there's all the information about how I coach students and how I work with people in our agency. So talk to me a little bit about that. So what do you offer in terms of your business? Great. Thank you, Amy. I have an agency that is filled with a bunch of amazing women. I only have women in my team Love and it. they all work remotely because it's aligned with my vision to change the way that women work and offer more flexible work opportunities for women all over the world. And so my agency team has been running ads for online course creators for seven years now. And that is what we do. It's our jam. We love it. We love seeing course creators make money. Yes. And then I also have a course uh, for beginner ads, launchers or ads runners that focuses a lot more on list building and getting that first launch off the ground. And they can sign up for the wait list on the website. And I have a monthly membership called the Launch Lounge Membership, where I coach online course creators on how to not just use ads, but really understand the marketing underneath the ads to make the ads succeed. Ooh, that's powerful. Well, I've got a lot of course creators listening. So again, tell them where to go to learn all about that. TheLaunchLounge.com. That's Perfect. where they can learn all about it. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. And thank you so much. You pour into my community. You are part of my Digital Course Academy bonus. So anyone who's bought Digital Course Academy over the last few years, one of my paid in full bonuses is how to use paid advertising. And Salome is my teacher inside of that. So we have been working together for a while and I'm such a fan of the work you do. So thank you so much for coming on the podcast and helping us get our holiday ads in check. You are so welcome. I love your audience. I love your community and I love being part of what you create. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, my friend. Take care. Bye. So there you have it. I want to encourage you, if you've never run a holiday ad, try it this year. And the fact that she said ads have never been cheaper in the last five years, that was news to me. And so I want to take advantage of that for sure. But I promise you, you have an offer in your business right now that you can start putting together for a holiday ad campaign. And you know what I love about a holiday ad campaign? If you have goals for the year and you haven't quite hit those goals, if you're gonna come up short, putting together a quick holiday ad campaign could absolutely get you closer to closing that gap if you miss the mark on some campaigns this year. I've absolutely used it for that around Black Friday. So just something to think about. All right. I hope you love this episode and I can't wait to see you next week. Same time, same place. Bye for now. 